welcome to the 18th lecture of combinatorics. Um, in the last class, we were considering Hall's theorem. So, we were doing it as part of considering several examples of double counting technique and counting uh, in two different ways and comparing and then inferring something from that right. Hall's theorem uh, is in itself an important theorem, it is about the system of distinct representatives So, in this problem we have a universe, say let us say it is cardinality n, we can take it as n for instance u equal to n right. Now, we have a family f of subsets of u, so let us say it is s 1, s 2, s m. See this m uh, can be less than equal to n or greater than n, but our interest is that we should get a representative. So, we have to select a few elements actually m elements. So, we want to select m elements from u. So, that means m has to be less than equal to n otherwise how will we select right such that one of them can be a representative of s 1, uh, another one can be uh, a representative of S 2 and another one can be finally, another one of them can be a representative of S m, but no person can become uh, a representative of more than one sets here sub, uh, in this collection right. So, but it is of case it is ok that if uh, a particular x is a representative of x n x S 1, but it is a member of S 2, S 3 everything it is not a problem. But we are allowing uh, one person to represent only one set and that person has to come from that set right that element has to come from that set. So, this was now uh, Hall's theorem gives a necessary and sufficient condition for the existence of such a distinct representative. Uh, as we have elaborately discussed in the last class this problem can be uh, recast as a bipartite graph problem. So, for instance, here is a bipartite graph, this is the A side, this is the B side and on the A side the vertices, uh, there are m vertices right, m vertices say 1, 2, 3 up to m and each vertex correspond to say the ith vertex correspond to the set S i. That means, uh, yeah, it is this S i, the set S i is uh, like represented by this vertex here right. And on the B side, we have the elements of the universe that means 1, 2 up to n right the u elements of the universe right. Now, the, uh, the edges are put like this the S i if it contains a few elements here. So, now they are so the, the those uh, members of S i from here will be connected to S. So, S i right. So, this is membership actually right. So, and of course, so any edge uh, from i to j here means the jth element of the universe belongs to the ith set right. And uh, of course, the degree of a vertex on this side is the cardinality of the set, cardinality of the set S i right. So, and then the degree of a vertex j here is essentially d of j that means in how many sets it is part of. Now, the that is the way it corresponds to here. Now, the question of selecting distinct representatives uh, corresponds to selecting uh, m edges from this graph, selecting m edges from the graph such that uh, these m edges have uh, uh, the endpoints of this m edges are all distinct. That means no uh, two edges in this m edges uh, share an endpoint. 
right. So, if m edges are there all the edges are going from this side to this side. So, that means, uh, so there one edge should be like this one edge should be like this one edge should be like this one edge should be like one edge. Should be. So, every vertex here should be part end point of one of the edges right because I am taking m edges. So, there are only m things here on the a side the edges always go from a to the b side. Here there are n elements and n is greater than equal to m. So, therefore, there can be elements here which are not touched by edges, but then if a particular vertex here uh, is touched by only one edge it is not possible that you have uh, something here and then something else is coming here that is that will never happen. So, this kind of uh, collection of edges is called uh, uh, a matching it is called it is called a matching right in the graph theory uh, it is called a matching right. And in this specific case we say that we are we seek a matching of the a side that means we want every vertex on the a side to be matched right uh, matching. Hall's theorem is about the existence of such a matching. is about the existence of such a matching and uh, uh, the, the uh, important thing is something called Hall's condition. So, this theorem gives a condition and if this condition is met the Hall's theorem says uh, the system of distinct representative exists or the matching of A exists. What is the condition? The condition says for every s subset of a that means if you consider any subset from the subset of vertices from the a side and it, then if you count the neighborhood of s you note this neighborhood of s will be all on the b side this has to be at least as much as the cardinality as big as the cardinality of s n of s cardinality should be greater than or equal to s cardinality n of s cardinality should be greater than or equal to cardinality of s for all s subset of a this is the Hall's condition. It says if Hall's condition is met then if Hall's condition is met then there exists a matching of A. In other words, so in the uh, language of the distinct representatives, this says so what uh, do we mean by the cardinality? What, what is N of S? N of S is essentially the union of all the members of it, S, yes, uh, sorry, all the say for instance this s. So, we should here it is a it will be some set some s i in s right and uh, we take the union of s i's right. This will so that means, I take a because this is essentially the vertices on the a side corresponds to some subset of the universe and then uh, this s a subset s on the a side means a collection of vertices on the a side they they are certain subsets from the family and then you take the union of all those subsets they consist of some elements right. So, those elements uh, of the universe listed on the other side B side they constitute constitute n of s right. So, we say that uh, n of s has to be greater than equal to s which means that if you take this union uh, this union uh, this union has to be greater than equal to how many SIs are there in this I mean the this that is what we are saying how many subsets we are taking. So, the family should be such that we take uh, one subset then uh, each subset should contain at least one element if you two subsets each any two subsets if you take if you take the union of that there should be at least two elements in the union and then if we if we take any three sub subsets then uh, there should be at least uh, three elements in the union and so on right. So, for in other words for you can select k subsets uh, from the subsets uh, k k subsets not k subsets k subsets from f in definitely m choose k ways right because there are m total m subsets this is s1 sm. 
so from this subsets you can tell x say of them m two same ways and in if any take any uh, k subset from this collection if you take and take the union the number of elements in the union should be at least k is what we are saying that there should not be any subset with less than m uh, less than k uh, uh, members in the union when you select k things not that there are uh, for k that holds condition says for all subsets s that means any possible subsets you should consider consider there are two raised to m uh, possible subsets of uh, that subsets of s right so for every subset should it should work including phi in phi it is trivially true because n of phi is uh, just empty therefore zero is greater than zero therefore it's correct right so now uh, you note that this is a necessary condition very simply because uh, why because if this is not met there will be some k element sub k subsets uh, right s a s i 1 s i 2 right s i 3 s i 3 so s i k such that if it if i take the union of them uh, the cardinality is strictly less than k right uh, what does it mean then definitely you cannot find x1 uh, x2 x3 xk such that this belongs to this this belongs to this this belongs to this this belongs to this and they are all different because then they will be actually x1 x2 x3 xk they themselves form k elements they come from the unions and but our, by our assumption it is less than the union contains less than k things right so therefore this condition that the union of si1 si so i2 si3 sik for any selected i1 i2 i i k should be greater than or equal to k is definitely a necessary condition for distinct representatives to uh, exist. So, the sufficiency is the non trivial aspect we will not get into the proof of this as I told what I want to with soft case this is this is available in any graph theory book or you can consider the co graph theory course in uh, or learn it from the graph theory course in NPTEL. So, uh, so, but what I want to discuss here is a special case of it namely when the bipartite graph we consider uh, is k regular right. So, k regular bipartite graph. So, this is a side this is b side. So, you see k regular bipartite graph will be like this right every vertex here k edges will be going out of from every vertex and k edges will be coming out from every vertex right. Now, we want to show that uh, the Hall's condition is met by this thing. So, first let us note that the trivially the number of vertices here n and n if there are n m m uh, it is as we know m uh, vertices are here this n uh, vertices are here we have vertices are here. So, we should have m equal to n this is what we first claim why is it so because see we do the double counting here. So, now we count the edges right we count the edges in two different ways o once from this side that means we count the edges like okay here this is the first vertex 1 2 3 then this is the second vertex from here 4 5 6 like that we count right. So, since each vertex here has k edges incident on it then I have definitely m uh, vertices here. So, m into k edges are here counting from this side right a side right see note that every edge we have counted why because each edge is incident on exactly one vertex uh, incident on the a side it is uh, incident on one vertex exactly one vertex because the other end points on the b side end point is on the b side and definitely the same number of edges same edges we can count from the b side also b side also each vertex is k edges so uh, since there are n vertices on the b side that is n into n into k n into k. So, what we can say is this because this is we are counting the same things right the number of edges in the graph that will be equal right. So, k cancels and then we get m equal to n that is what it. So, the same kind of strategy we will use to illustrate uh, to, to prove that the Hall's theorem is valid for k regular graphs. So, in uh, see if you want to see it in the matrix form which which you were discussing before. So, here I am taking the a side the vertices of a side as the rows. Uh, so, this is 1 2 3 up to m right 
and the vertices of the B side are taken as columns right. Now, the graph uh, some kind of a, uh, the matrix representation for the graph will be like this. So, if i j th entry will be 1 if uh, there is an edge from i to j i on the a side j on the b side right. So, of course, the edges are always going from a to b side. So, we do not have to worry about uh, like why uh, right there is no edge inside a there is no in, uh, edge with uh, inside b. So, therefore, all, all the edges will be of this form that uh, it is between i and j where i is uh, from the a and j is from b ok. One. So, there is uh, this is the situation we will get a see. So, of course, if you want to count the number of edges we want to count the number of ones uh, in the matrix as we are told right. One way to count the number of edges is by counting the number of ones in the rows r 1 r 2 c r m right. So, this r 1 is essentially the degree of vertex 1 on the a side r 2 is essentially the degree of vertex 2 on the a side and r m is the uh, degree of vertex m on the uh, a side right. Because see essentially given a vertex if you if you scan through this thing and if you so many ones if you see so many ones there that means it is connected this vertex is connected to this 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 and this right. So, and then this will this will give you the total number of edges this is the number of it number of edges in the graph. Similarly, the number of ones we could have counted by counting along the columns. So, the in the column uh, if you count here uh, the this is the degree of vertex 1 on the B side. So, we can say uh, yeah degree of so this degree of vertex 1 on the B side and then because of case we have numbered the vertices uh, on A side as 1 2 3 up to n the vertices of B side as uh, 1 2 3 m. So, they are we are using the same number, but we should understand that the columns count the degree of vertices in the B side uh, if you count the number of ones in a certain column ith column. So, you will see uh, the degree of the ith vertex on the B side right. So, therefore, we sum up the those numbers we will get the total number of ones here. So, we just uh, can uh, what do you say uh, we can we can we can match them uh, we can equate them because they are equal right that is what uh, that is that is the that is the situation. Um, and then uh, of course, I just uh, put it in the, the previous using the notation of the previous uh, like matrix form. Um, I presented it that way. That's, uh, otherwise, it's, these are these things are quite simple. I just wanted to give a framework in case some student is finding it a little difficult to think about this. Uh, the how to how do I double count? That matrix picture is very nice. Now again, coming back to the Hall's condition. So now, how do I uh, say that? Uh, um, um, how do I say that the number of uh, number of so for for neighbors for for any subset s on the a side n of s has to be greater than or equal to cardinality of s for a k regular graph so you can just from the previous matrix we can collect those vertices i1 i2 i cardinality of s right these are the vertices in the s right so this all belongs to s so this belongs to this belongs to s each of them right so now, uh, right, and then um, of case if you scan this row, so this again uh, the the columns are again one, two, three up to n. The vertices of B, the vertices of these are vertices of B. These are just selected rows. I mean the vertices of the A side, but those vertices which are in S right now we create a sub matrix of that actually. So, we selected few rows that is all right. Now, we can scan again for the ones in the first row. So, what will you say this will be degree of i 1 right. Similarly, here if I scan through the ones and add uh, count the number of ones I get degree of i 2 right and uh, here I will get degree of i cardinal s yes, because for each uh, the degree of each vertex in the set s we will get. If I sum it up I will get the number of edges 
in the graph uh, which are incident on some vertex in S or in other words those edges which are going out of the vertices of S we will get right. So, in the graph picture we have some S here those edges which have a which look like this right. So, this is what we will get right this the other edges we are not counting at all. So, so these edges right this is this being S this being A this being B right and then uh, the what are the neighbors of S here. So, you know certain columns so for instance uh, the jth column here that will that correspond to the jth vertex. Uh, how will I say that uh, vertex is a neighbor or not? So, if it is uh, all 0 here, if it is all 0 here that means, uh, j is not a neighbor of this no vertex in S sends an edge to j that is why we see zeros here right. So, we can kind of imagine that we are discarding those rows we can remove those sorry discarding those columns that those columns where all are zeros. So, the remaining rows uh, remo remaining columns correspond to n of s and these columns are such that there is at least one edge uh, in it. So, so, the number of edges as I say this uh, number of edges in number of edges in g uh, right. So, this is uh, I am counting in the so what I did is I created a sub matrix here and then I I removed some of these columns which are not in n of s because they were all uh, zeros in their columns in the corresponding columns that means they are not in the and the remaining columns all have at least one in it therefore they are in n of s and then uh, now the matrix is slightly different the matrix is s the vertices of s is listed here uh, and then the vertices of n of s is listed here now right because those vertices of B which are uh, not in N of S is now removed right. So, here uh, I know that the number of uh, edges going out of uh, S uh, will constitute actually the number of ones in the matrix. Now, we know this is at least N of S into 1 because you know every column now has at least 1 in it right and we know this is less than equal to because the number of ones we have already calculated as s into k right because that is we are summing up the degrees of the vertices and they are all have k degree what is k degree. So, what do we uh, 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 so this is not an upper bound we, what we want is a lower bound. So, what we say this at least have one such matrix only we get, but still we know that this cannot have more than k. So, while this is at least n of s definitely uh, how big can it go. So, this cannot go uh, this into k right. So, because each column can have at most k ones in it. So, maximum n of k into this thing. So, this has to be uh, greater than equal to s into k right. In the worst case it can be n of s into 1 but in the in the maximum case it can be n of s into k. So, therefore, uh, the number of ones here cannot be more than n of s into k, but you know the number of ones in this thing is actually s into k. So, we get n of s into k is greater than equal to s into k. So, we can cancel it off and we get n of s uh, is greater than equal to s as we want this is the Hall's condition. And we, since we are talking about uh, any uh, subset S of okay, case, so, so we uh, when S is phi it is trivial. So, otherwise we can we can make this matrix uh, this argument make work right. So, this is uh, this proves that the Hall's condition is trivially true uh, ok not trivially true we needed to put some uh, little effort to show that. So, for the k regular case. So, for in what is the k regular case? It means that every subset has equal cardinality. It is a k uniform hypergraph we considered as we if you use the terminology we introduced in the last class k uniform hypergraph the subsets subset f the family of subsets f is such that each subset in f has the same cardinality k the k uniform hypergraph right. And uh, also the each 
vertex in uh, the universe has equal uh, degree that means they are all in they each vertex is in exactly k uh, k sets in this special case we can this this turns out to be k regular bipartite graph from the point of view of the set system it may look a little uh, too much to ask for both this condition namely your subsets are k uniform and also your um, um, each vertex has degree equal to k right so of case we are only asking for degree at most k right so the double counting uh, is very clear what we have done is we cooked up a matrix like this so s and n of s uh, S versus N of S, S being uh, the set we are considering, some arbitrary subset, those rows are picked up, N of S uh, is the neighborhood of S, right, those columns are picked up and then we uh, look at this matrix. In this matrix, the number of ones are counted uh, when we add up the number of ones row wise, right, that is that will give us sum of degrees of the vertices in S, that is S into K. So, this is the number of ones S into K while uh, the number of ones can also be counted column wise, but in a, any column maximum k ones can be seen. So, this number of ones in the matrix cannot be more than n of s into k. So, if n of s into k is greater than or equal to s into k. So, therefore, n of s is greater we cancel off k and we get n of s is greater than or equal to s. This is what uh, we infer right. So, of case this kind of um, arguments are very common in um, graph theory combinatorics. So, so we uh, this much is enough for uh, uh, like the double counting technique, but of course, this uh, the last problem we discussed was a little is uh, was interesting enough for um, spending some time on it right because the system of distinct, distinct representatives it is in it itself a important topic. So, now um, though we most of the things we consider in this course are taken as examples, but uh, of case one should not uh, one like it is not many times uh, these examples can be by themselves important right, because there may be general enough problems that uh, it may appear in some uh, other applications which you consider in some other context right. Therefore, uh, so, one has to take note of those examples beyond the uh, like the technique that we are studying right. It is not just the technique that you have to note also sometimes these problems themselves are important because, because they have a certain generality about them. The next uh, topic we want to consider is uh, inclusion exclusion principle. This is another technique which is quite uh, important. So, this is what is this inclusion exclusion principle. So, we consider this question we have two sets A and B some universe is there of case and then uh, we have two subsets. So, A and B you can assume that universe is say n or 1 to n as usual. So, it is a finite uh, number of members are there in the universe and then what we are interested in is finding the cardinality of A complement intersection B complement right. So, I will draw a picture and illustrate it. So, let this be the universe U right. Now, you can draw two sets A typically it can be like this A B right. So, of okay. case. So, now I am so these are all members of A so, these are members of A in A minus B namely uh, which are in A, but not in B these are members of uh, B and A together B in A intersection B and say these are uh, these these are members of uh, B and then there are members outside it also right outside it also say outside. So, what we are interested in is uh, in this green type of members that means which are outside A outside B that means members in A union B complement 
or in other words the members in A intersection A bar intersection B bar A complement intersection B complement. So, you should note that uh, A complement is something so I can mark it like this using light colors yellow color. So, maybe yeah it can be it is this right. So, in the Venn diagram I can this is this yellow region which we are marking is the A bar and B bar say I can use this brown color to see this is B bar right. So, now in the intersection what uh, is there? So, everything which is not in A union will be there because for instance this part is in brown, uh, this part is in brown but uh, definitely not in yellow. Similarly, this part is in yellow, this part is in uh, this part is in yellow but not in brown, but brown and yellow both comes in the here that is where we we put uh, uh, the green dots right the green type that is what we are interested in. So, you can uh, take several examples for instance, uh, so A can be, so this can be a class right of say 100 students, this can be a class of 100, 100 students. Uh, then out of that uh, the A, A may uh, be the set of students who go to the maths class right, mathematics class, mathematics lectures and B may, th may be the set of students who goes for the uh, physics lectures, physics lectures. Of course, there are some people who go for both. There are some people who do not go for uh, neither mathematics, who do not go for mathematics or physics, neither mathematics nor physics, right. They do not, they are not interested in both. Uh, there can be people who go for mathematics, but not physics and there can be people who go for uh, physics, but not mathematics. So, when uh, suppose we want to estimate uh, or we want to find the number of students who uh, attend, uh, who attend, uh, who do not attend mathematics or physics, none of them, mm, right. So, then that is, that will be this because A being the students who attend the math classes, B being the students who attend the physics classes, A, A complement intersection B complement will be the students who do not attend math class and do not attend the physics class. Right. So, which is essentially by you know you are familiar with De Morgan's rule and all. So, that is uh, A union B complement right. So, these are all maybe 11, 12 standard material therefore, we do not elaborate more than this. So, then you see if we want to find out uh, the number. So, if I'm from the Venn diagram it is very clear what we should do right. So, this is A, this is B, this is B. Now, if I want to find A a union B complement which is essentially A complement intersection B complement. What we do is we consider the cardinality of U that means this one this entire thing right. From that U minus A cardinality this will be minus of then we minus B. So, okay this will be minus of right. But then we see that this portion namely yeah this portion is minus of twice because we finally, we are interested in this region see this this region which I am marking like this right. This region is what we are interested in. So, So, it was natural that we took the entire thing u and minus of a and then minus of b and we expected to get this answer the number here. But uh, the, the problem is that this green part which I marked here, this is the intersection of a and b which got minus of in a as well as in b both two times. So, therefore, I have to re-add it plus cardinality of a intersection b that is what we need to use. So, the final formula will be. Uh, a union B complement cardinality is equal to cardinality of A union complement is equal to u, the cardinality of the universe minus cardinality of A minus the cardinality of B plus the cardinality of A intersection B. So, one may worry 
uh, whether this formula is correct or not. For instance, it is not very rigorously done. What are the situations? I drew a Venn diagram. Uh, is it always true that A intersection B has to be like this or so sometimes it can be like this, right? Sometimes it can be like this. So, am I considering all cases or uh, because I gave a proof based on the picture, am I taking all the cases carefully? So, in this case, it is not very difficult to consider all the uh, cases very carefully and see that uh, we are actually considering all possibilities. For instance, in this when A and B were disjoint, our A intersection B will be empty and then uh, you know A u minus A minus B is the correct answer. Uh, this is empty therefore, there it will not this it is like adding a 0 to it, it is not a problem. Similarly, if this was the case. Uh, a and B. So, uh, this itself would have been A is inside and B is inside A. So, then this U minus A would have been enough right uh, to give you the answer because B anyway goes away when I remove A right from U. But then uh, I have removed B also, but then re added A intersection B, but A intersection B will be the cardinality of B. So, it is like minusing B and then adding B back so that it cancels off and gives you back U minus A. So, in all these cases this is correct right. So, but uh, we can do one thing we can argue it in a slightly different way to make it a little rigorous maybe in this case if it is not more rigorous, but in when um, uh, there are more ed more uh, sets to consider the more generalized cases we will need uh, definitely a different approach then just saying that minus of something add something back right. So, therefore, we will carefully consider it. So, what are the members in it right. So, here for instance, uh, I want to count uh, these members here in this region right uh, in u a union b complement I mean which are not in a not in b right, but in u right. So, definitely uh, those members right uh, this is the these are the kind of members uh, we want to count, but those members which we want to count which actually come here in u. So, it is counted in this this part once right, but on the other hand those members are never counted in this part or this part because they are not in a. So, therefore, then uh, so for a particular x how much is it contributing to this entire sum on the LHS is what this x is contributing 1 to this sum this u cardinality u because x is contributing 1 to this count right, but nothing to this count because a does not contain x at all because when you minus a some other members in a are uh, contributing to this count which is getting minus. Similarly, x does not belong to b therefore, uh, when I am minusing cardinality of b some other members in the universe is contributing to this subtracted number right and they are not in a intersection they are not in a they are not in b they are definitely not in a intersection b uh, that such x's are not contributing to this also. So, if I com consider the contribution of x uh, in this region, in this region, so x in this region, that means x in A in A complement intersection B complement, or x in the complement of A union B, uh, then those things contribute to this sum uh, in the RHS only once, namely, namely in the first term, right? The other term they don't contribute. Here they don't don't contribute. Uh, here they do not contribute yeah yeah here they here they do not contribute the here they do not contribute here they contribute here they contribute. So, that overall for instance for each member here will contribute once to you. So, uh, therefore, this count uh, this it is the same as uh, their contribution to here, but then what about uh, the members which uh, are inside this or inside this or inside this. We can see inside A alone right A minus and B part A minus B part. So, a suppose particular x belong to um, A minus B part it is it belongs to only A part or A. Then definitely here it is contributing 1 because x is x belongs to you 
and here it is contributing 1 minus 1 right this is minus dof here it is not contributing anything that means 0 here it is contributing 0 because it is not part of this. So, it is 1 minus 1 0 is the total contribution coming uh, for that particular x right. So, similarly we can consider a particular x in b minus a that means those members which belongs to b but not belong but does not belong to a they will contribute once to u once minus 1 to 1 to u and minus 1 to b and 0 to a and 0 to this term and then 0 to this term. So, therefore, 1 minus 1 total contribution is 0. So, and then finally, those vertices which are in say oh, x element of a intersection b which are in both a and b they contribute uh, 1 to u, u so, they contribute yeah such excess will contribute 1 to u minus 1 to this a and minus 1 to this b and definitely 1 to this. So, this will be 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 right total we will get a 0 right. So, the so what we mean is any uh, x which does not belong to a union b bar does not contribute to this sum in the right also. So, they on, so only things which contribute to the sum in the RHS are the members in A union B. Therefore, uh, our uh, our formula is correct that is what right our formula is correct. Of course, this is just uh, two element set uh, we can always uh, we can consider a slightly bigger example namely with uh, uh, three elements. So, may be a question like this. So, that is how there is a big universe. So, which is u right and then let us say a b c. So, the Venn diagram is only indicative it can be uh, it can be in a different way also for instance you could have drawn a b c like this right or you could have drawn a b c like a b c this is also possible a b c. So, several possibilities are there, but we just take one ex example case right. So, uh, here intuitively I will argue that uh, so, we what we are interested in is this region red region right. For instance, a may be the students who go to the maths lectures, B may be the students who, who go for the physics lectures and C may be the set of students who go for the chemistry lectures. And what we are interested in is the students in this red region that means, uh, those students who do not attend the math classes, uh, those students, those students who do not attend the math classes and the physics classes do not attend the physics classes and do not attend the uh, chemistry class they do not go to any of physics chemistry maths right. So, so, how many are there is what he is asking right. So, of course, we can we can apply the earlier technique this is of course, this is uh, we can do like this. Yeah, so, you cardinality of u the total then minus of a then minus of b then minus of c this is the initial try. So, for instance if a b c all of them were disjoint we would have become successful by now because you know we just want to which we just have to minus of the cardinality of a and the cardinality of b and the cardinality of c from the cardinality of u we would have got those uh, the cardinality of uh, a complement intersection b complement intersection c complement namely the comp the cardinality of the complement of a union b union c we would have easily got it. But then we have intersections here when I minus the a uh, and minus b we have actually minus say this portion uh, which portion say this portion this brown portion two times right because from as part of a we have minus it once 
as part of b we have minus tit ones and as part of c we have minus tit ones right so again all these portions are minus 2 times and what of the this portion middle portion uh, this middle portion so yeah it got minus 3 times is not it because it uh, as part of this as part of this as part of this also right. So, what do we do so, this is the strategy. So, what we do is we first re add uh, the cardinality of A intersection B and then B intersection C C intersection A because we noticed that the members in A intersection B was minus of twice once part of S as part of A once part of as part of B. So, we re added it re added it re added it, but then we noticed that the members in A intersection B intersection C were minus of 3 times because once here once here once here, but now we re added it right uh, 3 times. So, we 3 times to minus it and 3 times re added it here also here also here also that means it is its contribution is not uh, those members in uh, A intersection B intersection C are not minus at all you minus it 3 times and then added it back 3 times that means we have not minus it off. So, therefore, we have to uh, minus it once again we have to minus uh, A intersection B intersection C cardinality once again this is the formula right. So, I think it is convincing enough what we did is to find the number of members in A union B union C complement. So, that means the members in U minus A union B union C right or in other words the members in A cap a complement intersection B complement intersection C complement that is what we are interested in right. So, we what we can do is we can first consider everything in U then minus of the members in A then minus of the members in B and then minus of the members in C. But then if A B C were all distinct we are definitely through by this procedure, but then there are members in A intersection B possibly, there are members in there are members in A and B intersection C possibly and there are members in C intersection A possibly. Each of these members were minus of 2 times once part of for instance this members in A intersection B were minus of once as part of A once as part of A. So, we re added all of them because we want to minus only once not 2 times, but when we did it what happened to the members in A intersection B intersection C they were minus of 3 times because once as part of A, once as part of B, once as part of C, but re added also 3 times because once as part of A intersection B, once as part of B intersection C and once part of C intersection A. So, but we have to minus it once right because we want only things which are not in A, not in B, not in C, but uh, the things in A intersection B intersection C are in all of them. So, we have to minus it once again. So, that is how this formula works. Uh, yeah, so that is correct, and then uh, yeah, uh, because we have carefully argued it. So now we can also consider the trick technique we uh, the argument we considered in the last thing. For instance, you can take a member in this region, some x of the universe from which is coming from this region. Maybe uh, that x we have to actually count because that belongs to the complement of A union B union C or in other words that belongs to A complement intersection B complement intersection C complement. So, what how does this x contribute to the total count in this? So, it definitely contribute once to 1 to uh, u and uh, definitely 0 to this one, 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 because that particular x is not part of A, not part of B, not part of C. Therefore, this minus cardinality of A, minus cardinality of B, minus cardinality of C, etcetera, are not affected by that particular x. Similarly, A intersection B, B intersection C, C intersection A, or A intersection B intersection D does not contain that x. Therefore, all uh, the contribution of that x to each of this term is 0. So, 
it is overall it is contributing 1 to this entire sum right. So, that is correct they are contributing correctly, but suppose if we take an x uh, from here for instance which is in A, but not in B or C only in A right. So, then uh, such an A contributes definitely 1 to you because I remain is part of you and 1 to A and it is not contributing to B or C definitely the 0 0 because it is not it is a part of A, but not part of B not part of C. Similarly, it would not contribute to A intersection B, B intersection C because it is only in A it is not in A intersection B because it is not in B. Similarly, here here everything is 0. So, that is co total contribution is 1 minus 1 1 4 to you and 1 to minus 1 to A sorry minus 1 to this minus A right. So, total contribution is 0. So, similar argument shows that the members which are coming from this region that means only from B that means uh, those members which belongs to B, but does not belong to A does not belong to C. Similarly, those members which are coming from this region namely uh, belongs to C, but does not belong to uh, A or B they also contribute uh, only uh, actually 1 minus 1 once to u 1 to u and minus 1 to that minus cardinality of zeta right no other term will contain their contribution. So, therefore, they are proper and now if you take a member from here for instance some x from here that means which belongs to a intersection b that means it belongs to a and b but not to c that means exactly two sets they belong to what will be their contribution their contribution will be uh, 1 to u uh, minus 1 to a minus this this term the second term so minus 1 to this term and then of course, this term it will contribute 0 because it does not it is not contained in 0. Here on the other hand it it will contribute uh, plus 1 right because it is a it is a yeah it is a it is being added right. So, the total contribution is 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 that is total 0 right. So, that is true of any element which is coming from just two sets out of three sets it belongs to two of them, but not the third. And now if you can so if you consider any member which belongs to all the three of them that means any member which is coming from this portion say something like this right. So, such members will contribute to all the terms here right how, how will they contribute they contribute 1 to u minus 1 to this negative term a minus a and similarly minus 1 to this card minus cardinality b similarly minus 1 to this one uh, and then plus 1 to this plus 1 to this and plus 1 to this and minus 1 to this. Now, how will you calculate how much is there because here it is 1 how many a's are there 3 a's are there right. So, therefore, the total contribution is 1 to you say 1 to you and minus 3 because 1 uh, to a 1 to b 1 to 3 all minus right. Then this actually is 3 choose 1 because each uh, set is selected 1 times out of the 3 sets now for each of that selection of 1 set it is minus. Then, then 2 element sets 3 choose 2 possible ways we can select a and b, b and c, a and c. For each of them we are we have contribution from the such excess once. And finally, 3 choose 3 right uh, that means all the 3 sets uh, it is contributing um, minus 1. So, this as we know is adding to 0 right because 1 minus 3 plus 3 minus 1. So, this is adding to 0 and you know this is uh, as we can see this is this identity we have seen earlier this if you do 1 plus x cube. So, uh, this will be and put x equal to you expand it this will be n 3 choose 0 3 choose 0 is 1 minus 3 choose 1 x plus 3 choose 2 x square minus 3 choose 3 x cube and you put x equal to 1. 
sorry this was plus 1 this was plus 1 put x equal to 1 minus 1 then you will get this alternate minus 1 says minus 1 says required right. So, this is what we will get right putting x equal to 0 in this key, but anyway we have seen it before. So, therefore, it is not very surprising otherwise in this case definitely you can evaluate it uh, separately also we can uh, of case we can just write down the values and some, but the next in the next uh, case we consider uh, the most general situation namely when we have n sets namely a 1, a 2, a 3, a n and these are each a i is a subset of the universe u right. Now, we are interested in the intersection of a i complements which is essentially as we know it is uh, a 1 union a 2 union a n all complement right. right. This is what uh, uh, we we want to estimate now. Now see of case we can we can uh, use the previous tactic of we can try to use of case we cannot use it. So, for writing uh, drawing a Venn diagram uh, a complicated Venn diagram uh, saying that. So, this is we, we are drawn we have drawn n sets right in a universe uh, and then uh, consider the cardinality of u first and then uh, we are interested in the members in u, but uh, those members of u which are not in any of a 1, a 2, a 3, a n right. This is what we usually want to say, but uh, then we will say that okay, first you can try it, it take all the members of u then uh, minus of members of each a i that means first minus a 1 cardinal cardinality of a 1 then minus cardinality of a 2 and up to minus cardinality a n. Then you have to re add uh, uh, the cardinality of a i intersection a j for every uh, pair a j. Uh, somehow we think that those three element three sets three in, in the set the members in the intersection of three uh, sets might have got re added too many times. So, we subtract it and things like that, but uh, it is a little clumsy to do like that. So, we prove it uh, in the other way the way we have uh, we have uh, we have been adopting the second proof right all the time we were in this uh, when two uh, two set case three set case we had we gave the second proof but of course we have to write down the formula for that and uh, which looking at the pattern we can uh, write it down uh, as it as this so a1 sorry ai complement intersection the cardinality will be given by cardinality of u minus sigma a i. So, for i equal to 1 to n here all the n since we are minus then we plus uh, a i intersection a j cardinalities uh, that is for every i and j every pair i j we will do this thing then minus uh, for every three uh, three sets three subsets taken together. So, a i intersection a j intersection a k we will take that cardinality will be minus and so on. So, alternate plus and minus in the end till we get a minus 1 raised to n right we have uh, the cardinality of a 1 to a n. Uh, so, that will be added this is what. So, this formula see the question is how will we get this formula that is why uh, yeah, so we discussed uh, in the last two cases, so we will discuss in the next class.